Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, coming to you from the shores of Waikiki Beach. Today we have a very important guest. Uh, his his words are like bullets. Every word that he he writes in his new in his new book, The Imitation of Saint Joseph, so powerful and so needed. We have with us today Father Matthew Kauth. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, I got to tell you something. I used to have a home up on the north shore of Oahu, um, and that's where the big surf breaks. I mean, this summer we had 30 foot swells here in Waikiki, but uh, the swells on the north shore can break 85 feet. My son jo Jeremiah is kind of famous for having ridden some, hit, ridden those wa waves that big. But what something unusual is hap not unusual, but there's something happening on the north shore of Oahu, and I'm so fortunate. I sold my home on on the north shore. Because what's happening is people built homes in places that maybe weren't the best place to build them. And that big surf has come up and is just eroding um, the sand and eroding the beaches. And, uh, and eventually, some of those houses are going to be lost. And to me, it's a great example of what happens when you try to deny nature. Nature is an irresistible force because God is. And it is, it, is, it is God that, uh, that created the universe and, and created you and created me with the very natures that we have. And in our society today, it seems like we're trying our very best to turn nature upside down on its head and to deny it. But eventually, nature, nature wins. And so we have uh, this, this, this experience, which is just shocking to me uh, as a man. Uh, I've seen... I've seen uh, um, this great hatred towards fatherhood and towards uh, towards men at uh, you know we would call it patricide really and maybe we brought it on ourselves maybe it's because men weren't being the fathers that they should be and weren't taking their kuleana as husbands uh with full full responsibility but there's this great hatred for men but also it's because it's diabolical satan hates fatherhood i remember as a young man i was in social studies class and one day I had this epiphany. It was after lunch, so probably I was half asleep. But I was in the social studies class, and I had this thought come to me that one day I could be a father. I, I, I could bring uh, a, a person in, into being who would live forever. And from that moment, I had this great desire to be a father. And we have with us today a priest, Father Matthew Kauth, who I know at some point in his life, God called him to be a father, a spiritual father to, to us uh, in the church and even outside the church too. So fatherhood is so important. And we have this 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 kind of silent, uh, let's call him a Clint Eastwood type guy that we don't hear his voice in scripture. We don't hear, uh, we don't know much about him, but it's kind of like uh, there's, there's a cowboy uh, code that says, uh, talk less, say more. And there's so much that St. Joseph can say to us. And Father Matthew Kauth is with us today. I can't give you his whole... Uh, background, but priest in the Diocese of Charlotte, uh, and uh, is received his bachelor of sacred, theology, of sacred Theology at Catholic University of America. So many great scholars and people that we've interviewed have come from there. And currently, Father, your your role is what now in in uh, in Charlotte? I am the rector of Saint Joseph College Seminary. Wow, that is so cool. Your 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 kuleana is to is to help form our priests amen it is indeed and so and I, I love the formation that catholic priests go through you know uh solid first learn to think by the study of philosophy and then now let's study theology and really help to really fully understand and and our greatest our our, our greatest one of our greatest teachers thomas aquinas uh, are you you're are you are you a, would you say you're a, uh thomas aquinas you're not a professor of, of aquinas I, but I did. Well, I am actually. Um, <laughs> I did my doctorate in the thought of St. Thomas Aquinas. Um, I did a doctorate in moral theology, and I studied uh -huh. under 
Father Stephen Brock, who's an incredible, incredible Thomist, um, but specifically on the area of moral theology of St. Thomas's notion of charity is a kind of friendship between man and God. That was my specialty. It's beautiful. Well, well tell, tell me, um, let's just, just dive, dive into the subject. Right now we see that, there, you know, the thing, tell us about St. Thomas and his teaching on, on, on nature, na <laughs> natural law, and well, how that applies to our conversation. Sure, sure. I think a couple of things first. You know, Heraclitus once said that you can throw nature out with a pitchfork, but it will come hurling back at you. And that's, <laughs> that's sort of what you were referring to in some of your opening comments. And yeah. fundamentally, St. Thomas holds the notion that every effect, of course, resembles its cause. Every effect resembles its cause in different ways. And so every single thing that you do has your sort of stamp on it. And I didn't know until today that you were in Hawaii and, and some of your background, I looked up and, and so, but every one of those things is part of your narrative. And so no matter what you do, whether it's write a letter or speak in public or, or help with a garden or something, it looks to some degree like you. And the most important thing that you do and the most the highest thing you do in some sense is imparting your form imparting your nature to another that's what it is to be fathers right to give someone else the nature that we have and the word nature itself just comes from the latin word natus which means to be born so what are you born with mm -hmm. so philosophically i inherit a nature i receive a nature and that nature is a principle an intrinsic principle of motion, of activity, of what we can do, because my nature is different than a dog nature or a bee nature or an aardvark. Each of those has their own potencies that can then be actualized. Whereas a man, of course, his nature that he receives, not just from his father and his mother, but of course from our, our father who was God, um, in infusing in this, 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 this matter, a soul that unites it. It's the form of a living thing, right? Um, this composite nature that we have of spirit and matter. And as a result of that, we're not like anything else that we encounter in the world that have their specific natures that are not, as it were, rational. You said you made the, the, the greatest synopsis, you know, the, the, the cliff note version. That was awesome. And it's, and it's in, in our nature um, to be a good man. Uh, would be to fulfill to fulfill our, our, our telos, the, the, the philosophical word telos is to to like you have two great Danes there I right do. next They're to you right now. Right now. Yeah, and uh, and what makes a Dane a good Dane? Well, Danes, you know, most dogs sleep eighty percent of their life, and uh, Danes sleep about ninety-five percent of their lives. Okay, so so, so then he's being, so they're fulfilling the, their talos right now. They're sleeping right now, fulfilling their talos. <laughs> true, but we that's that. Glory to God by virtue of being massive and sleeping. <laughs> but that that is that is the essence of what we're talking about here. Is that there is a nature uh, in in the man and the woman, our, our great uh, St. John Paul II, wrote uh, his wonderful theolo uh, theology of the body and understanding that there is a complementary nature between a man and a woman. And uh, you just can't get rid of uh, the, the nature of a man is so needed right now. T tell, yeah. me why, tell me why you, you wrote this book, The Imitation of St. Joseph. What was the genesis of that? I think it ties into why I wanted to... Uh, begin this seminary in the first place. You know, when I went through seminary, um, I had the sneaking suspicion as I began to learn about the faith that my inheritance had been kept from me. Oh. In other words, I began to learn about the truths of the faith and the tradition oh. of the church. Yes. And it, it, it's, it was the exact opposite of what a father is supposed to do, right? To hand on to his son all that he has himself received. Yes. And that's the net what yes. tradition means. So when I came back from Rome, I was thinking with some other uh, wonderful minds in the church here, in the local church in Charlotte, and we came up with the notion of trying to start a seminary so that we don't outsource our fatherhood, but rather with the vocations that grow up here in the Diocese of Charlotte, which we've cultivated for a long time, that we be able to assist them here and impart to them, as we said earlier, imparting one's form, as it were, being able to be true fathers to them, to give them the formation that they need to be fathers themselves. So we started the seminary in 2016. And so we've got several years under our belt now. And we've had many, 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 many men come through here already. It's been, it's been a great blessing for our church. And then Tan Books came to me at some point and said, would you write, since our our patron is St. Joseph, mm. would you write a book 
on the imitation of St. Joseph. And I mm-hmm. thought to myself, no, <laughs> because I don't know how I, I would possibly go about doing that. Like, how do you write, as you mentioned earlier, a book about someone whose voice you've never heard, whose visage you've never seen? Um, that's right. a difficult task yeah. because the temptation would be just to create a sort of um, a nondescript figure and then clothe him with whatever virtue you want. Yeah, but, but to be yeah, able to yeah. find Joseph as he really is, yeah. it's hard. We're talking with Father. We're talking with Father uh, Matthew Kauth, whose book, The Imitation of St. Joseph. Uh, St. Joseph is a bit of enigma to us. He's, he's not that guy, that, that soft-looking man that you see in all the paintings. That just makes me, I just have no, no, I'm not drawn to that image of St. Joseph at all. So when we get back, we're going to talk about who St. Joseph, what we know about him, who, who he really is. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bears Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite every all of you to uh, go to our website, deepadventure.com. It'll take you to Bear School of Manliness. It's a place where uh, men can join together, kind of like the men of King David in the cave of Adullam, you know, where all the misfits kind of gathered. And they help form each other, and the Holy Spirit formed them into the mighty, valiant uh, warriors of, of King David. That's what we hope our School of Manliness can do. We have monthly Zoom meetups, but we have a full three-year curriculum, too, uh, on the different areas of manliness. And it's also, what I'm most thrilled about, is it's a place where you can take your, your sons that are maybe 12, 13 age, maybe a little bit younger, uh, through this curriculum, they can have their own login that you can monitor. They're not allowed to be part of the man cave. That's where all the men fellowship together kind of like in a Facebook type situation and where we have our Zoom meetups. But they, you can actually follow them and go through the curriculum with them. And there's videos, there's audios, there's written things. And, and you can actually have a dialogue with your son, a real dialogue with your son about the areas that we're having that that, that month's lesson entails. And we all go through the same lesson at the same time. So if you start in year at point 1.5, year 1.5, you start right there with us. So we're all kind of, we're fellowshipping as we're going as we're going through it. So I invite you to go to Bear School of Manliness and you can even write to me bear at deepadventure.com if you're just curious and want to know more. We have with us a man, uh, Father Matthew Kauth, whose kuleana is to is to form other men uh, in the area of priesthood. And he's written a book on on uh, the imitation of St. Joseph. You know, Father, um, 
I, I was I was uh, fortunate enough. I don't know if you've been to in, in, you know in Israel. There, there's a hotel, and I forget the name of it now, but there's actually a statue there based on the Shroud of Turin. I don't know if you've seen that. That it, it show it, it really does, does show the three-dimensional image that the Shroud right. has. Right. I've when, seen that. You, when you're next it, in, in Israel? Yes. It's, it, it just, well, first of all, it's just excruciating to see what Jesus went through. But in the, in the image, he looks strong. Yeah. You know, because... It, because Joseph wasn't a carpenter, probably not a carpenter. He was tech. I believe the word is technon. He was a builder. He he. And and in Israel, I never saw a single house made of wood when I was in Israel. They're all made out of stone. So that's a lot of heavy lifting of carving out stone and placing stone. And he, and Joseph was a man. I mean, you probably wouldn't want to shake his hand. You know, it would probably hurt because it's so strong, and it probably scratch your your hands because they're so calloused. Who is who is Joseph? Well, I think the only way we can really get at uh, the particular character of Joseph, or even really approach it, is to remember that um, we come from somewhere. Part of the great hatred, I think, and the patricide that we're experiencing right now is this desire not to have origin. In other words, if I don't come from someone, then I can just make myself into whatever it is that I want by sheer volition. Whereas even in our physical features, right? I mean, we, we can say that you got Uncle Joey's nose, right? Or you have mm. um, your mom's eyes or whatever. We come from someone. And I think that if we think about Joseph, the only way to have any sort of accuracy about what this man was when he's called a just man is to look at his forefathers. And so what I did in the book is I attempted to read some of the fathers of the history of the Old Testament in the way that maybe Joseph would have. In other words, what were the virtues that they um, embodied and what were the things that Joseph would have wanted to have and what were the things maybe in those characters that he would have eschewed? Because if he is the just man, then he would have assumed, as it were, all of the best from his fathers before him mm -hmm. and sort of build up the character seeing that. Um, and I think that it gives us a pretty accurate description of what it means when the scriptures say that he's a just man. So, so tell us what that what, what you see in the patriarchs then in his in his own her, her, heritage. Take 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 um take the first one that I look. Well, I look at Adam a bit, but let's just take Noah for example. You know, Noah is asked to um, build an ark that is larger than a football field. You know, with a few sons. That's it. Probably the it's largest boat ever made at that time, right? I mean, it's <laughs> oh, it's geez. an absurd thing to be asked. Right. That that, that very. And what is, how does Noah respond to God? Do you remember what he says to God? Did you, I remember God what Bill asked, Cosby said. He said, he said, what's an ark? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Bill Cosby said, but I do know <laughs> when God tells him to go do this, Noah says nothing. Who does that mm. remind you of? That's Joseph. Joseph right? Yeah. And Noah's called, incidentally, a just man. Mm. In this and so yes. this is the first one wow. that Joseph looks like, right? Yeah. And the reason I bring up that example is because he's asked to do something that is absurd, that defies his reason, and yet he obeys, knowing yeah. that the the, uh, the the sort of the fruition of this commandment is beyond what he himself can possibly understand. He simply has to go start getting some wood, right? Simply mm. begin with the next step and be obedient to the I command that's that. been given. And I think that's what Joseph did. The, certainly, in the, let's just take a look at the uh, the Gospel of Matthew when Our Lady is found to be your with favorite child. gospel. I assume. I rather partial to it, I must admit. <laughs> <laughs> um, in that scene, right, it says that she was found with child, right? She's found with child, and what Joseph has to hold in his in his soul are two contraries at the same time. That is to say, she is with child. And she is perfectly pure. How do you put those things together? Right? I think that sometimes we want to jump to the conclusion that Joseph thought she had been unfaithful or something like that. That's nonsense. But I he, think that's knew, he knew her. He knew her. He knew her. And that's her exactly heart. the line. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, a, it's a moral sympathy with someone. I know oh. who you are. So I've got this reality here in front of me, but I also know who you are. So how does this go together? And so he makes a decision based upon his reason, and the decision happened to be wrong. Right? He's backing away, allowing mm -hmm. for God to do what God is going to do, the same way that you back away from the ark, right? the same way that 
Peter says, depart from me, I'm a sinful man, when he sees the miracle. Mm. The same mm. way in which Elizabeth says, who am I that the mother mm. of my Lord should come to me? He sort of receives. And that's when God fulfills his reason and says, this is by the power of the Holy Spirit, take her to be your wife. That must have been the fastest uh, a, a response to a commandment that was ever given. That Joseph would have said, absolutely, I will. But then you see in the rest of these scenes of Joseph life, Joseph's life that how could this possibly make any sense? It defied reason, but the resolution of reason is, is coming from a revelation to him. So oftentimes he's told what to do. But then when he's not, he has to do the best that he can with the light of the reason that he has. And, you know, it's interesting because during that time, uh, you know, to be called a father is the great is it's a stunning thing for me as a man to be called a father or for you as a priest, uh, you know, to be called a father. It's a huge responsibility. Because God, God the Father isn't kind of like a father. You know, it's not like, well, we depict him as a father because he's kind of mm-hmm. like us. He, he provides and, you know, he's, he shows leadership. No, he, we're kind of like him. We're made in his image. Yes. Uh, God, uh, um, the book is called The Imitation of St. Joseph, and the author is Father Matthew Kauth. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Daniel LaBoon Markham with this episode of Country Up. Truth or Consequences? Truth or Consequences was a popular television game show hosted many years by Bob Barker. Now, the way it worked, if a contestant couldn't straight up answer an obscure question within two seconds, then there were, well, consequences. However, the consequences were usually fun stunts or warm surprises. But in real life, There are serious, often costly consequences for not telling the truth. Seems as though lying in today's culture has reached an epidemic by everyone from news anchors to TV preachers to presidents, with everyday folks thinking lying will get them further than telling the truth. Never does. Now, the good book says that your sin will find you out. Always does. The quality of your soul pays a price for every lie, and your lies to cover up lies only gets things more complicated and makes you vulnerable to being found out. Shoe doggy, all that work and trying to cover one's arse for lying would just tire me out. Now, my wife Colette is as clear-eyed as she is clear-thinking, never lies or deceives, and she can see through fakes and muddy, foggy thinking like no other. Me? Well, I'm lousy at lying, so no sense in trying. Remember once when I was trying to convince Colette that I needed louder pipes on my Harley as a safety measure so folks could hear me coming up behind them? Her reply, you just want to sound cool. Darn it. Thus it again. Truth or consequences? Even though the truth can be a bit painful, I much prefer the truth telling pain over the long-term, sometimes grim consequences of lying. This is Daniel LaBoon Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos, Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. (laughs) 
So, Father, um, then let's have that conversation about what is the nature of a father? What is the, what is the, it mean to have that kuleana? Yes. As the scriptures say, that when we speak about the father from whom all fatherhood on earth takes its name, right? So our starting point, of course, is not us, even though we understand what we do. Um, nevertheless, we do know by virtue of revelation something about the father himself right and how is he distinct from the son and what we say of course is that all that the son is the father is except that he's not the son we call it in philosophy substantial relations this relation to be toward another and the other toward him so all that he is he imparts to his son wow everything Sounds like the prodigal so we father. Think about in, in human terms, and that's very much what we have relative first to human generation, that a man is giving everything that he has, um, at least on the level of, of, of his biology, uh, to his, his bride, right? And she in return, both receiving that and giving that which she has. And sometimes the reality of that by virtue of, of God's uh, uh, activity, um, a child is, comes forth, right? A conception of a whole new person. Mm -hmm. And so on some level, that child is the embodiment of, of their donation or their gift, right? But then we're not finished when we have simply a child born because we're the kinds of kinds of creatures that are perfectly helpless when we come into conception and certainly even when we come out of the womb. And as a result of that, St. Thomas mentions that for us to impart form isn't just to continue a species like the animals. For us, it's to then impart by virtue of education, um, leading someone out of ignorance, everything that we have. So to educate and to form uh, the children that we have uh, begotten. And so as a, as a priest, as a spiritual father, my particular task is to generate divine life in souls by virtue of baptism. But then it's also to feed and to form the life that has been generated. So then, so let's dig down one more level, though. I mean, we see we see in in the father in fatherhood today, uh, so many fathers just abandoning their 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 responsibility to the woman. I mean, think about just in the area of abortion. I've had a chance to talk to to different women in that area, and most of them, I think, wouldn't have had an abortion if there was a man that stood up and helped her, whether it was the father, or the an uncle, or or a friend, or a, or her father. Um, we're seeing this this. Uh, we're seeing this vacuum. Men are so quick to say, well, women are pushing us out. And that sounds like a victim to me. You know, they're, we don't, you know they're, they're trying to take our role. Well, you know what? Maybe if you hadn't left a vacuum. So men, what is men's re response to this, this, um, this kind of this angst and this really uh, the hatred towards fathers, for, mm -hmm. towards men and fathers? What, what is our response to that? Well, I think your point is accurate in so far as you know men I, I think that can sort of play the victim or it's her choice it's her body it's 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 I, I can't tell a woman what to do um, sounds to me like an excuse to to drop your own responsibility mm. you're, you're hiding behind a virtue what seems like a virtue of respecting her generosity when in reality this is your child as well right With every obligation to say right. to a woman I'll stand with you. I, I will help you through this. I will not leave you. I will not abandon what is my responsibility. Um, and that's that's where it is. I think you're quite right. I mean, I've worked for a long time in that arena, helping women to recover from abortions that they've had. And I think you're absolutely accurate in saying that if, if someone had been standing there strong at that moment and said, I will help you through this. I will not abandon you. I Instead remember. of that sort of false, that sort of weak um, acquiescence that seems and looks like generosity or charity or respect, you, I'll, I'll support you in whatever you choose. What kind of thing is that? Yeah. And that's the very thing we have in the very beginning, right? Because what do you have the difficulty? This is one of the things I talk about in the book. The difficulty of, of this scene of Genesis with Adam and Eve is that he said nothing. Yes. It wasn't that Adam was gone. It's, and she gave some to her husband who was with her. Right. He didn't see a thing. And all right. he had to say was no. Right. Correct. And everyone like, likes to point the finger at the woman that has, that's getting the abortion. Or everyone likes to point at Eve like, 
it was it was her and it was Adam not 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 being the man not protecting her from the from the snake we're talking with father Matthew Kauth we're gonna be right back talking more about what we can learn from this gnarly powerful man Saint Joseph gnarly powerful I love that it's true isn't it? <laughs> aloha welcome back to the bear Wozniak adventure we're, we're here with father father Matthew Kauth his uh his two great Danes have va- have left the uh the uh interview studio on his <laughs> end but I, I just love the I just, okay so let me ask you this a, a great Dane I always yeah. think of just a powerful are they powerful oh, yeah. yeah yeah they say they tell you to train them. We got them for the seminary. So they are kind of our security dogs. They don't do a whole lot of security, to be honest with you. Um, but they're f- great for the guys. We have 90 acres here, so they kind of patrol the area a little bit. But Great Danes, they say that you train them well when they're little, because when they're older, they only do things because they want to. Because <laughs> you, oh. you, you can't make a 200 pound dog do what he doesn't want to. Well, let, let's just draw this comparison between a Great Dane and, and St. Joseph, you know. Mm. Um, he was powerful. He was Absolutely. a protector, um, but you don't hear a lot. They don't. They don't. Uh, they don't. Um, yeah, like you said, they're they're actually actually usually resting, but but that's who that's who um, Joseph was to Jesus. And how do you see Joseph as a father to to Jesus? We we, we know of him as a husband to Mary. What what was it? Why would God choose Joseph to be the father to Jesus? What did Jesus learn from him in his human in his humanity? It was once said by a bishop, uh, so, such a beautiful statement that that the apostles had the task of spreading the word of God. Joseph had the task of keeping it a secret, oh. like keeping the word hidden. Oh my God! Right? So imagine so the protection, the protection of Joseph, um, mm. of being able to 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 hide this reality. And to and to and to provide for him in every possible vicissitude, because imagine, God could do this on His own, right? God, has, entire legions could take care of the baby Jesus if they wanted to, and yet, when all of a sudden one angel comes to Joseph and says, "Herod is looking for the child," not "I'll protect you," not "I'll send you legions," not "I'll destroy Herod because his kingdom is phony anyway," but on the contrary, so imagine any angel saying to Joseph take the child and his mother and go to Egypt. You are going to be the one that saves him, puts that into his hands. Can you imagine what kind of responsibility that would be? Think Incredible. About you think about Joseph. Yeah. And, and it's interesting is once that, that uh, the marriage, you know, takes place once, once he takes her, it takes her as the scripture says the God speaks to Joseph. Then the right. angels speak to Joseph because he's the head of that household. Think about right. this. Here's Jesus, this little child, growing up, young boy. Think how dark the kingdom of darkness is that they couldn't see that light. They couldn't, mm-hmm. they didn't, they knew, he, Herod knew Jesus was somewhere. They tried to kill all the, the, those children, Rachel crying for her children. But think how dark the kingdom of darkness is, is that they couldn't find that, that he was, that he was hidden. Um, I always think about the yeah. scene when when the the uh, the kings leave, the magi leave, and he says, "And bring me word so that I too might go and worship him." And they walk outside. The magi walk outside, and as soon as they get outside, they they, they find the star again, right? Yeah. The star is outside. And when you're talking about darkness, obviously stars are shown in darkness, not in mm. the light. Mm. Um, but at the same time, all Herod had to do, because they told him, I never he said thought of that. Outside. He just had to walk outside to see the light, but he's yes. even closed himself in his own volition. I do not oh. want anyone to be king. I yes. am king of the universe. <laughs> and that's what we do in our own lives. We can darken. What was it C.S. Lewis that said that God hides himself just enough so those who don't want to find him won't, but those that do want to find him Pascal, will? Pascal, I believe, said it. Right. Oh, so, so there's, there's sufficient Pascal. amounts of light. There's sufficient amounts of light for those who desire to find him, they will. And sufficient amount of darkness for those who desire to hide. Ah, so interesting. So C.S. Yeah. Lewis plagiarized Pascal. 
I think they all. I'm just, just, I'm just know, kidding. I mean, the common, I'm know, sure everything I ever say is it's taken no, from someone. I mean, I'm just going to tell you the way it is. The church fathers always plagiarize me. I'm just Absolutely. saying. Absolutely. <laughs> no. like He's passing on the truths of the faith. No, I, 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 he said it a little bit. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's, I shouldn't have said that. I mean, I love C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis. Oh, we all, Pray we for all me. But, uh, but he, uh, but it's such a true thing. If you don't want to find God, you're not going to. But isn't it interesting how the atheists, when they decide they want to refute God, they always try to refute the Christian God? Mm. Why is that? Well, that's the most robust argument. <laughs> yes, in, some exactly. ways, in some ways they don't, right? Because the, the, the straw man they, God... Yeah, they, they distort up. what the Christian God is, right? Yeah, so in part. Well, you know, one of the, the, the greatest uh, images... Uh, and I'm sure you're familiar with this. I don't know the name of it, but there is a, there is a. Um, I don't know if it's an original uh, statue or a um, uh, a imitation of one. But I went to a football game in Notre Dame. I've gone to a couple of them. I've been fortunate. And afterwards, I went to mass, in which is the tradition. And there was a statue of, uh, maybe it was a painting, but it was it was a sta- it was of Mary, and Jesus holding Joseph as he died. Mm-hmm. What, what what was what in think about Jesus and his relationship with his earthly father? Mm-hmm. Talk, talk us about well, that. One of the things I try to deal with in the book is that we all receive not just our our genetic code, if you will, from our father, but we all pick up his mannerisms, whether we like it or not, mm-hmm. um, the good ones and the bad ones. And mm-hmm. so imagine there's so many things that Joseph would have done that Jesus himself would have simply imitated. And his ways of speaking, his phraseologies, etc. Imagine when he uses the parable, before you, you go to construct a tower, do you not first sit down? I mean, he saw that firsthand, right? Wow. I mean, the examples that he's yeah. using in his life, etc. And then it comes to the end of his life. And I thought to myself, one of the things that, uh, for which St. Joseph is the patron of a happy death, um, mm. is the only reason I'm happy is because it's, it's, it's obedient. And obedient to the will of God. And so there's an image of a, a reflection by one of the church fathers that St. That St. Thomas picks up on, that when Jesus bows his head on the cross and dies, St. Thomas says that he's, it's his final yes to his father. He's, he's, he's nodding his head yes in obedience when he bows his head in what? death. I haven't heard and, that one. That's and prior to that, of course, to St. Joseph, because you and I at least have the great consolation and hope that when we die, I'm going to see Jesus, yes. and I'm going to see the Blessed Mother. Yes. And what's horrible, and sometimes for Joseph, is he loses them when he dies. <laughs> like his death, he doesn't get to be with him. He was already yes. with them. Oh. And so there is this sort of going first, departing oh, from them. Making the way, like, like a father would do to make the way, huh? Right, right, right. Well, you know, they're in, they're in this age now. I'm going to take a break here in a moment, but I think about all the Marian apparitions in, the, in this last hundred years. Mm. And I think, and then came Joseph, right? And so That's now, right. in, in this age, is there a new awakening, uh, a new, uh, a new, um, I don't know, anointing or power or response or call to men to be like Saint Joseph? As Mary has come, now next comes Joseph. It's time for men to be Joseph, and maybe, maybe Joseph won't appear in, in apparitions. Maybe he needs to appear in the hearts and hearts and lives of men. And let that mm-hmm. that anointing, that spirit of jo- of Saint Joseph, as you say in your book, the imitation of Saint Joseph, mm. because Christ, Beautiful. it's getting it's getting darker, you know. But but uh, yeah. but uh, maybe that may, when you see all these apparitions of Mary, you know something's up, you know. We're talking about Father. Yeah, well, can you can you hold that hold that yeah, was, hold, hold that for me? We'll come right back and talk yeah. about it. I'm going to show everybody the book. I love tan books, don't you? Don't you love the way they publish these books, these leather books? I love them. Um, the book is called The Imitation of St. Joseph, and the author is Father Matthew Kauth. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. 
Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure, plus the three year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, we're here with Father Matthew Kauf. He's the author of this book. This book is, it's its like, uh, every word is like a bullet. It's really penetrating. I really suggest men buy this book. And women, this is a great gift for Christmas for your husbands and for your sons both. Uh, the Imitation of St. Joseph. We were talking about how it seems to me in these last hundred years there's been the apparitions of Mary and then how, well, then in the New Testament there was Mary and then and then we see Joseph and how it's so important in this day and age for Joseph, the, for men. It, it, the, 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 the experience of, of Joseph may not come in apparitions. It's going to come in the appearance of men being men again, fathers mm. again. And yet what's interesting is that he appeared in Fatima, isn't it? Well, tell me. I don't, I don't recall that. Yeah, so, you know, after these appearances that Our Lady had to the children, on the on the main uh, miracle day who was seen in the heavens with jesus uh, holding jesus in his arms but joseph okay. and joseph and the baby jesus sort of blessing everyone right. um in unison yeah. pretty yeah. wild and i i do think yeah. there's something to that i think that as you say there was an age of the blessed mother and she will always be our mother and our queen never to depart from us in her solicitude for our, her children. And yet I do think that he's coming to the fore, that somehow the the light of the church is shining on the image of St. Joseph right now, in particular because of this desire to be without origin, this desire to have formlessness, um, this desire to create oneself out of nothing and to, to deny your own fathers. Um, that Joseph is the one coming to the fore, presenting us with those virtues of what it actually does mean to be a man and a father. And w tell us what that means. I mean, <laughs> I, I, when you say the imitation of St. Joseph, I want to get into that. What can men do right now because of this battle that we're in? What is it that God's calling? In, in what ways do men need to start imitating St. Imitating Joseph? Right? What, what, is, what is the solution for right now? For right now. Imagine if when Joseph acted, was there ever a moment that he didn't act on behalf of God? Because God is his child, right? In other words, that every single thing that he did was to provide for God. Right? His whole vocation is right there mm. for Jesus and the Blessed Mother. And in that sense, he becomes not just an image for us in the seminary as a priest, because he's the first one to hold the body of Christ, right? Mm. He's the first one to care for the church, who is Our Lady, um, oh. and to protect her, to love her, but to do so chastely, perfectly mm -hmm. chastely. Mm -hmm. That's an image of the priest. But for every single man to have his whole consideration every single day is that I don't, I don't have my own life. 
My life is yours. It belongs to you. Show me on this day how I serve you. Show me how I can sacrifice for you. Show me what your will is in this thing, especially when I'm hitting that ceiling of of reason and I need some revelation and some inspiration from God to know what's going you know, and part of your thing is is about the adventure. Is there anyone who had more of an adventure than the, the lives of St. Joseph and Our Lady? They had no idea what was coming next, right? And to be sure, there were times, especially imagine right after Christmas, et cetera, and there they are. Like, they don't want to, I could imagine on some level, they don't want to do anything or go anywhere. And everything they have is and need is right there. And yet, yeah. at some point, Someone's got to go out and get some food. <laughs> well, well, think about this. The thing about this, dude, it's like, it's like, okay, the angels have come and Jesus is coming and the angels are singing, the shepherds and the magi are there. And then there's this, hey, uh, Joseph, you got a minute? Um, you need to get out of here. <laughs> you exactly. know, so every, even though, it, hey, God, I, I, you could have you know, set us up at the Hilton or the Marriott. We got this little <laughs> cave here, this manger. Well, this, but this I, I, even example. having said that, Everything's just fine. Leave it just as it is. Let's build a tabernacle right here. And then the angel says, you better run. <laughs> well, you know what? This is Maybe this is a way to put things in a nutshell. If, if your whole motivation is, uh, is for our Lord, for our Lady, imagine when they get to uh, Bethlehem. And of course, everyone knows the story. It's, it's fantastic. It's glorious. And the room at the inn. Like if they had found a place, we wouldn't have this story. We wouldn't have the ox and nice the ass. Can- that, nice the candles. Rest, and- right? We, don't, we wouldn't yeah. want something at a hotel, right? At, at, a, at a Ramada Inn. Um, <laughs> and, well, I, the breakfast there, so, you know. <laughs> in this case, in this case, Joseph gets there. And what does he do? I think that the... Uh, this scene epitomizes what we fall into as men, is the sort of hopelessness of a particular situation, right? That you can sit on your hands, you can rub your hands and say, I don't know what to do, I'm helpless. I mean, God has put me in this impossible situation. He just does the next thing he can, right? Mm -hmm. Comes up with this fantastic idea maybe knowing the shepherds in the area, maybe maybe it's possible that Our Lady's family had sheepfolds, et cetera. Maybe he knew of a particular place. I don't know. But what he did was he acted. Mm-hmm. Instead, of, instead of becoming sullen, melancholic, he acted. And when he couldn't find a place, he doesn't come back to her empty-handed. Like when he comes back to her, you imagine him coming back and saying, being defeated, and, and I'm sorry, I don't know what to do. I can't find any place. Oh, instead, God. how does he come back? Yeah. Yeah, that sort of weakness that we can yeah. fall into. It really comes back to her. I, the way I imagine it is like, I've got an idea. Yeah, I got this. I got this. Don't I've worry. got an idea. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. and follow, follow me here. Yeah. Um, what kind of strength that would lend to the situation. But then, of course, imagine as he's done all this and he's taking care of things and he's hanging a light, as, as it will, and, and making a manger and a bed and all that kind of stuff. Um, imagine when it's over. And... The child is born, and Our Lady's looking over Joseph with that. And kind he has of a crap. halo on his head. <laughs> All three of them. <laughs> bling, bling, oh, bling. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Imagine when they get to this moment of 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 just being able to adore him before anyone else finds out. Mm, that quiet. Right? Yeah. And and at the same time, her looking over at him with that sort of gratitude that so fills a man with strength when a woman mm. looks at him and it, says, "Thank you." That is you so did this true, thing. Father. That is. My wife, it, she just affirms me so often. You know, um, Jesus is probably, you know, the, the Bible says that Jesus went home and submitted to his parents. Right. He, said, he said to his father, thy will be done, his earthly yep. father. And he learned how to pray. I would say that's about the most dangerous prayer a man can pray is to sure. say to God, thy will be done. That's a dangerous man. That's a dangerous prayer. Uh, and, 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 and the best thing about the impossible situations is you get to see God do stuff Hmm. and you only get to see God you only get to see God do stuff if you're in his will if you're out over there running in circles with your hair on fire you don't get to see (laughs) God you don't get to see God do stuff but 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 if you're but if you say like on my desk over there it has the name of the Oval Office a desk called the Resolute Desk and beneath it it says that very dangerous prayer I will be done as Jesus Amen. prayed on Mount, on, Mount, on, the, on Mount of Olives, nevertheless, right. not my will, but thy will be done. But he learned to say, uh, thy, he le- learned to say, yes, Father, to his earthly father. You know, I worked alongside my dad a lot when I was a kid. You know, back in the days, I don't know, 
kids don't do that much anymore. But I was his I was his labor. I mean, when he was going on and built a little cement wall or something in our in our in our at our house or do some work. I was the guy that fetched things and was there to steady things and hold things. And, and he taught me to anticipate what he needed before he mm-hmm. even asked. And I, I think that's where Jesus was in his heart with his earthly father. And he learned uh, to say yes, because it's not easy. There's probably a lot of times when he was up early and, and, uh, and, and going home late. Sure, Absolutely. Yeah. And, and so, and to even say, can you imagine Jesus on that long journey back from Egypt? Like where, like, where have I heard this before? You know, isn't this where the Egyptians come and attack us or what's going on? That's a long, <laughs> arduous journey back, you know, and then to arrive at this poor little village of Nazareth, you know, mm. but he learned to say yes to, to Joseph. We have another minute or so. What will, what would be your exhortation and encouragement to men right now? I, you know, <sighs> Joseph was told, and this is the motto that we took for the seminary. Um, we put in our seminary motto, we built mid the crest, um, Noli Timere. So it's actually, I've got the crest in the book. It's like on the second or third page. So I our, saw that. Our, yeah. Our, yeah. And so it's a lion because St. Joseph is from the tribe of Judah. Oh, yeah. And so the lion is seated and he's looking over across the other field in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the shield, right? He's looking across at these diamond patterns because in heraldry, those are called seeds or semi. Um, and so the seed of a vocation is placed, a white seed of a vocation is placed into a green fertile ground over which Joseph is sort of custodian and guardian. And then the motto there, Noli Timeti, comes from the angel, which is the angel said to Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. We heard that phrase oftentimes repeated what a by great John. great word for a seminary. John Paul II, wow. right? And yeah, so dude, my exhortation to the men is don't be afraid to take the church to yourself to take responsibility for your families, but also to take the church for yourself in a time in which um, things are chaotic and, 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 and things seem so tenuous and fragile. Um, I say to the men here that are in the seminary, we've had 50 young men come through St. Joseph's in seven years from our diocese um, wow. and they're good, good young men. Um, but one of the things we always say about them is that these are these are the courageous ones because they're running into a burning building, right? Not running running out oh, of it. Praise God! Um, it's so be powerful. To take Coraggio, courage. Yeah, the the virtue of fortitude. That's a good word. That that's a that's a good word for all of us. Uh, till next week, um, we invite you to go to our website deepadventure.com. Thank you, Father Matthew Kalth, for joining us. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wildstick Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wildstick Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.